Hello friends, welcome to Testing Shala YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to discuss on test plan. So this is a, one of the important test test deliver. So in this uh, video, I am going to explain you in detail what are the ingredients of test plan and what are the things we will be writing in each and every section of the test plan. I am going to give few some of the examples and how to write each and every section of the test plan before moving further if you have visited the uh, testing shala youtube channel for the first time then please subscribe to this testing shala youtube channel so that all our future videos related to software testing will be in your inbox so that using these videos you can enhance your testing skills go by to the introduction section so introduction section is nothing but where we will have to clearly define so what is the purpose of this document so what is the purpose of document and uh, what is the the project for which you are writing this test plan so what so you will be writing as a brief introduction about overall the project and brief introduction about the testing you are going to. let's move on to the second section which is testing section the testing section here we are going to talk about what is the overall the testing we are going to adopt to your testing or an application you are testing to detail out for every testing you are going to perform let's talk about the different kinds of testing you adopt is uh, unit testing functional testing or system testing non-functional uh, testing or it could be regression testing the final is acceptance testing so we'll be doing various different kinds of testing uh, should repeat say unit testing so unit testing when you are uh, writing a test plan for unit testing here you'll have to clearly call that out all the subsection let's say for unit testing what are the test risks you are able to anticipate what are the issues uh, currently you are going through everything you need to detail it out as well as we will have to put a mitigation plan along with who is the owner to mitigate these risks and issues so you have to put a table where we will have to call that out risk name risk details uh, who is responsible for mitigating this risk or resolving the uh, issue this issue will get resolved so everything will have to put in a detailed table manner and you should be able to give a visualization picture to the stakeholders whoever is going to refer this document so we'll be validating the two things here one is what are the features you will be testing it and what are the features you won't be testing it as part of the unit testing in the then a test approach as part of the unit testing what are the different you are going to do as part of unit testing what are the things you'll be covering and what are the tools you will be using it everything you will be documenting in your test approach what is your approach in adopting the unit testing and if you are going to the 2.4 section this is a more of a, a if a, if your project belongs to any regulatory compliance has to adopt let's say if the if it is a licensed project there is a regulatory compliance is there if you are going for pharmaceutical again there is a regulatory compliance is there where we have to uh, clearly follow the guidelines which are defined as per the regulatory norms so hence if something is uh, regulation is there then we will have to clearly call that out what all the regulatory compliances you will be following the fifth point is test pass or fail criteria so you will have to clearly call that out when we say your testing is passing when we say your testing is failing so this is very important and crucial as well that you have to clearly articulate uh, how your test case is, is passing when you are saying your test case is passing and when you are saying your test case is failing so that is a 2.5 section and when it comes to 2.6 section which is test entry and exit criteria so test entry criteria is nothing but so in this case so when you are going to start uh, unit testing so in order to start in uh, unit testing what all the prerequisite uh, should uh, meet in order to perform unit test cases such as uh, all the test case hardware should be up and running uh, which is installed and available for testing and any documents you are looking for unit testing 
those documents should be up and running for you so that you can refer those document and you can finalize the unit test cases uh, or if you are looking for any test data you need to be created as part of prerequisite then even those uh, items should be get ready before you are entering to the unit testing right even uh, if you are looking uh, any specific uh, test environment uh, it could be any hardware issues or software issues anything so you should uh, put it as a prerequisite once performing the unit testing so that is the criteria you will have to define for the unit testing what are the things you have to clearly articulate each and every point in the document from the all the stakeholders then all the stakeholders will be aware of the situation which all the criteria is really met and which all the uh, things is not really met so test exit criteria also you are going to define test exit criteria you are going to define when you are going to say your testing is really completed what your uh, the criteria you are going to follow that when you are going to sign up that uh, uh, your test closure you will be clearly call that out have you tested all the test cases that means is 100% execution is have you really done so what is the pass percentage what is the fail percentage right you have to clearly define if it is 95% pass rate only you are going to stop the testing uh, let's say if less than that if it is let's say your pass rate is still 75% then we will go and escalate to the leadership saying that your pass rate should be increased uh, from 70 to 95% then you also give a suggestions what are the things or which all the critical functions if they fix it we can go and achieve that uh, 95% rate uh, there is no I and uh, critical uh, uh, severity defect should be there on an outstanding uh, in the system is a cost constraint then you will be defining the cost constraints as all the exit criteria are really met or are we really closing to meet so that they can put the appropriate appropriate pressure across to all the stakeholders to ensure that we, we will have a safe landing we will have a big crash landing and this exit criteria you will be using in all your daily status report and uh, clear status report or any updates to the leadership team hope you, you understood what is entry criteria and exit criteria then let's move on to under test what all the test deliverables will be delivering as part the as part of the the testing you are going to adopt here the the way one is the test plan itself the document which you are uh, currently we are going through the test plan itself then uh, you will be having a test creation uh, document where you are going to write the test cases then you will have a review checklist that what all the guidelines you will follow to review the test cases and uh, the guidelines for how to write the test cases right and the uh, test cases itself as a test deliverables then you will have execution where you will be tracking your execution you will have the, those are also a test deliverable for you test deliverable for you and finally as part of the test closure you will be writing the test closure memo so that that is also an another test deliverables basically stood uh, so what is all about test deliverables and what are the various uh, documents will be delivered by you as part of the closure of this testing project okay let's move on to understand so what are the roles and responsibilities in the testing project first in this testing project there are many various stakeholders will be working including your testers your test lead test manager development team product owners product management so everybody will be working on this project where you will have to clearly define what are their roles and responsibilities let's say you should clearly define what is the role of project manager you have to clearly uh, define what is the role of the QA manager so what is the role of test lead what is the role of the tester what is the role of product owners what is the role of the scrum master what is the role of pro product management so in this way when you articulate all the roles and responsibilities very clearly then everybody will work with their boundaries so that you can clearly nail down saying that from whom the deliverables are really missing who is responsible for the delivery using this roles and responsibility metrics you can clearly escalate if things are not working 
as expected i hope you understood uh, what are the roles and responsibilities section what then let's move on to understand so what is test suspension and test resumption criteria so basically here we have to clearly call that out when you are going to suspend your testing you have to clearly define when you are going to suspend the testing or when you are going to resume the testing and you have to clearly document it when you are going to suspend your testing let's give some of the example when there are many major issues or there are very very high critical issues are there in the system then you may not be taking for the testing that means you are going to suspend your testing until unless they are they are going to fix all the critical issues until then you are not going to take anything for the testing that means you are going to suspend your testing on a temporary basis or if there is any big change request has come where whatever the functionality they have implemented that will get impacted in a drastic manner then there is no point in continuing the testing then here you will be clearly call, call, calling out you will be suspending your testing until the change request which has come is really has been implemented or not to ensure that everybody will be in the same page let's say if suddenly if we stop the testing then they should clearly know why the testing team has really uh, uh, stopped the testing so then so let's understand what is the resumption criteria so what is a resumption criteria so resumption criteria is nothing but when you are going to resume your testing when earlier any of the testing you are suspended because of various various reasons if those issues are problems is resolved then you are going to resume the testing so that item also you are going to define clearly when you are going to resume your testing i hope you understood uh, testing uh, suspension and resumption suspension then let's move on to understand your test environmental stopping and training needs so these things you have to clearly define so what all the uh, testing environment requirements you have so what are the different operating systems uh, which you are going to test right and even what all the browser combinations you will have to require in your testing everything you will be documenting it what is the operating system you are going to work or you are going to support or you are going to sign up what are the kinds of mobile devices you are going to test it could be android it could be ios or it could be windows what is the versions of each devices right so you will be clearly defining it so what are the windows operating system you should have it what are the latest update packages you should have it everything you will be defining clearly in the test environment section that would help at the end of the day when you are writing a test closure you, you can clearly call that out your project or your application or product has been certified or tested under this environmental conditions so with that we can sign up as to uh, we can sign up and use the same information in the release notes as well to uh, test environment then let's go to the stopping so in order to start this testing project we should clearly define how many resources are required what all what kind of resources are required based on the kind of testing you are going to perform whether you are performing a functional testing or a non functional testing or an automation testing then you should clearly define how many team leads are required under functional testing how many tester testers are required under functional testing in the same way for performance testing automation testing you have to clearly define it so what all the resources are required how much resources are required based on the testing estimations you have done so you have to clearly articulate uh, based on the project needs and also you should clearly define if there is a lack of knowledge in the testers on the functionality or there is a lack lack of you know, knowledge on the any tools you are adopted for testing then you should identify the test, testing needs as well in the test plan so in that way the leadership team understands okay these are the some of the basic knowledge gap is there with the team and there is a testing training has been planned to improve the knowledge 
I hope uh, you understood the test environments, staffing and training needs which you have to clearly, clearly articulate in your test plan. The last point here is so the change management. So last point here is change management. In the change management, let's say when the project is running, suddenly some change request will come into the system and you should clearly define, let's say if something comes abruptly in between, what is the testing mechanism, how we are going to take it, what are the process you are going to adopt. So you have to clearly define the complete uh, change process, uh, change management uh, process definition as per uh, testing perspective so that everybody will be aware to that uh, change, change management procedures. I hope you understood uh, the complete uh, details on test plan, what are the things you will have to require to write it in the test plan, right? You have to clearly define each and every aspect in the test plan that would give the good signal to the leadership team that as a test manager or a test lead, you have clearly defined the good uh, test plan so that this document will be used, used for all the future references just to ensure that where we are moving in terms of this test plan. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned all about test plan. If you enjoyed watching this video, please click on like button. If you are visited first time testing Shala YouTube channel, then please click on subscribe and bell notification so that all our future videos related to software testing will be in your inbox so that you can use these videos to enhance your testing skills. Thanks for watching this video. 